and uh, you can share screens. You can walk them through an MLS or a few listings. So don't be afraid to use this. It's free. Just go to zoom.us and you don't have to have an account or anything and you can just invite the people just like I do with an email and boom, next thing you know, you're having a virtual conversation that looks like the future. And it, I think anytime you do something like that, if you do it right, if you do it right, it makes you look better. But if you do it like this, um, where this is all the person sees of you, then you've just stymied all the good stuff that you were supposed to be doing. So do it first, practice with people, not on clients, and uh, use this use this platform. I think it's awesome. Okay. Um, if you're not talking, uh, mute yourself if you can, because otherwise we hear lots and lots of um, ambient noise as well as um, creaking chairs and, and any of the gum popping you might be doing. What we're going to do today is good for brand new agents to the company and it's good for seasoned agents. Uh, and we're just going to go over some tools. Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for the uh, reminder that it's Groundhog Day. Can you do that for me for the next six weeks every day? Just send me a Groundhog Day so it's like a Bill Murray thing. Uh, we're just going to cover some basics here. And some of the stuff you're going to be like, well, duh, I know that. And that's awesome. The more times the direct communication, the more times an agent or an OM or an MD says to me, duh, I already know that, the better I feel. Because what does that mean? It means you've got the system down and you don't need the, the ideal director of education would not exist because you've got all the systems down. So that's what we're heading for. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen. Um, and so you should be able to see. This is the this is the invite I sent out. Carrie, give me a thumbs up if you can see that invite. Carrie, you because you're the first one on my screen here. Okay, great. So these are the things we're going to go over today. Some will take a little bit more time than others. Uh, none of it is meant to make you an expert. It's meant to give you a, a 10,000 foot overview with the idea that with your OM or with another agent or with your MD or with a session with me, then drill down into these more. Right? Just making sure everybody knows what's available to you as a Coal Baker Distinctive Property Agent. One of the reasons I hope you joined our company is because the innovation and the tools at your disposal, as well as wonderful people like Carrie and Jennifer in the back of this uh, room here, and Elizabeth and all, and Daisha and Lisa and uh, all of our great, and Ashley and our great OM. So use us, use the tools, get better at your job. Okay, so we will go in order here. Um, contacts in your CRM. This is super important, and it's a, it's a tough thing for agents to get their head around. Um, and here's why. So here I am, Derek Spanks, and I'm an IQO, and if you don't know how to get into this, that's you and your OM. Go to cbiqo.com, log in, and this is where your business lives. This is your office, IQ office. All of your file cabinets are in here, all of your contracts, all of your contracts, everything should be in here. This is how you can do your business, okay? But if I'm a new agent, what I really want to start doing is hitting my sphere of influence. Those people that already know me, already trust me, and want to maybe use me as a, their real estate agent. But if they don't know that I'm an agent yet, then they're not gonna call about real estate. So what the first, one of the first things we need to do is to get the people that are our contacts into our IQO database so that we can start hitting them with things, okay? Um, remember what I said at the beginning of the year, think about this, real estate is a contact sport Contacts, contacts, contacts. That means have contacts, and that means make contacts with your contacts. See how it's a contact sport? Good, I knew you would. Okay, so this is your home page. Your contacts will live up here in your customer relations file cabinet. Um, you've heard me say this before, maybe, but all of these are your file cabinets. Okay, and in each of these file cabinets in your office, there's a lot, a lot of stuff. All of your personal information is up here in this file cabinet. This is how you change your profile. If you want to change your bio or have a new image, um, you can do it all in here. Um, we'll look at this drop down a bit more later, but this one is all the things you need for forms and all of that stuff to, for contracts and trainings. And then this one is just a help thing that IQO has. So these are all file cabinets. One we're going to talk about first is your customer relations. Okay. So we click on this. IQO is... Uh, not always the fastest thing, so if you see this screen just going, don't don't lose patience. Just make sure you um, uh, understand it's a really big system and it takes a little bit of, of time, especially in the back office at Sun Valley. So this is where I start telling really, really bad jokes. Um, okay, so here 
Please mute yourself if you're not talking. There's a lot of noise going on here. You've got leads and contacts. And I want to make sure you know what a contact is. A contact is a person that you will already know. It's in your system that you are bringing to this system. A lead comes to you from out in the world, the World Wide Web. Any lead you get from your website or from Facebook or whatever will come to you. Okay? All right. In order... Can someone mute? There's like, it sounds like someone's moving a truck uh, with their teeth in the background. So mute yourself if you're not talking, please. Uh, or just cough into, into the microphone, one of the two. Uh, my recommendation is to generate a spreadsheet, and I can attach this um, as the spreadsheet when I send out the recording, and put your contacts information in a very simple spreadsheet just like this. I'm a fan of master spreadsheets because if, as long as you have everything in a spreadsheet, if IQO goes haywire or if you go haywire, they're all going to be here. And you don't have to go call Outlook and say, hey, can you send me my content? They're all here. So you would just put names in here, Carrie Seriani, um, and then the email. These are the two most important parts because IQO is really an email system. So you want to have their, their emails first and foremost. Carrie hey, Rick. What? Um, coincidentally, love you too. Coincidentally, um, we talked about this in the OM meeting just a little bit ago, and uh, Teresa mentioned it's smart to have first category, last name category. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, Elizabeth, I didn't mean to say that. I thought um, I thought it was Carrie actually. It was you know, okay. <laughs> that's why I barked at you. Okay, so it's this simple, and the the three categories that are most important are the, the names, the email, and then contact type. And this will allow you to enter these things into um, IQO and de develop groups really simply. So Carrie Seriani, she is a buyer. Uh, she, is, uh, she lives in Northridge, let's say. And I also want a contact type of um, holiday card. Okay. I put those all in the same cell separated by commas and then IQO will read all the things separated by commas and say, oh, she belongs in three different distribution groups. So if I ever want to hit all my buyers, Carrie's already in there, boom. And if I need to email all the, buy the people in Northridge, which is a community here in Haley, she's already on that list and I don't have to go do it individually. So the more work you can put into this column I right here ahead of time, the easier it's going to be for you to um, send emails that are relevant and useful to these people, okay? If you have their phone, great, address, city, state, zip. Again, this should be a database that you can uh, keep and keep building on if you get a new contact because someone called that you haven't talked to in 10 years, put them on here, and then you can put them in the IQO. How do you do that? I'm going to show you really quickly how you um, do the upload of your um, of your spreadsheet. Josh has a question here. Yes, sir. Before you move on on contact type, I was just hoping you could give us two more examples. Uh, what, what else would the system be looking for? Okay. Great. Like buyer, obviously seller would make sense. Great. Um, and maybe you want them on your newsletter. Okay. <clears throat> so they would get your monthly newsletter, which goes out next week. And another one might be um, uh, client appreciation because maybe you don't want to always have everybody get your client appreciation stuff but this person you really like them you want to make sure they are invited to things so thank you you but can you put have any to, you have to type in like newsletter or these specific things for there to be a recognition in iq you do not you can add them manually once okay. they're in iqo you can add them to a contact type but this just saves, like if you're new to the company, you probably haven't done this yet, this is gonna save you a lot of manually clicking and whatever. So the more thorough you can be here, um, Josh is a fire, a volunteer firefighter, so maybe he's, maybe this Carrie Seriani is all of these things. They play hockey together um, and they, they quilt. So he's got all of these things. So he can email his quilting folks who are always buying homes, patchwork homes, yes, but homes nonetheless. I have note about this. Um, Wait, there, that was a joke. Okay, Jennifer. <laughs> uh, you're, um, you want to make sure, too, that when you're typing in those contact types, that they're, they're the same. If you've got a couple of contacts in here who are going into the same contact type, and you want to make sure it's typed exactly the same way. Otherwise, I feel like it's going to create three versions. One is going to be quilt. One's going to be quilting. One's going to be quilts. It, they need to be the same spelling. 
Yeah, this will, great point, Jennifer. Um, that's why she's my favorite OM in Idaho. This will create three different buyers uh, contact groups. And you don't want that. So make sure you, all caps, no caps, whatever, make sure they're the same every single time. Okay? All right. I, I like spreadsheets. For me, it's a better way to, to keep things where you should be. The, the metaphor I've used is if all of your contacts are your, you run a camp, a holiday, a, a summer camp, and you need a master spreadsheet of every single person that's there. And if you don't have that, how are you going to do roll at night or whatever? So you have a master spreadsheet, and then you can say, this guy's in canoe, this girl's doing painting, whatever, over there in the contact type. But have that master spreadsheet so that everybody that is in your sphere of influence, A, B, C, D, whatever levels they are, is here. You know, always be there. And if we change IQO or if you change offices or whatever, you have these people here. And it's a much easier thing. Okay, then we go. And I'm not going to go too in-depth with this. Your, um, your uh, OM can help you with this. Um, why did I push that? I pushed that just to get a little break. Maybe I should take a drink of water. Sorry about that. Sometimes we call IQO IQ slow, um, but not today. So how do I get that spreadsheet into my, I, into my IQO? It's a good question. OMs, please remember that it has to be a CSV file. So that spreadsheet has to be saved as a CSV. If that doesn't mean anything to you, send this to your OM or send it to me and then we will do the, no, not to your OM, sorry, Elizabeth. Send it to me and I'll upload it for you in the right format. But the way you do it is you go to customer relations. Remember, this is a file cabinet. These are all the different drawers now in the file cabinet that you can access. And you're gonna come down into here and you're gonna import contacts right there. Don't worry about all the rest of these. I've never even looked at leads call center properties. Go ahead if you want, but uh, really you just wanna do import contacts. It'll say, here's what's gonna happen. This is just telling you what's gonna happen. It's like the worst use of white space in the history of the world. Next. And then you're gonna choose that file, your database in your spreadsheet, you choose it. And then you'll just go through, and I'm not gonna get in the weeds on this, but it'll go through and you'll just click some things. And the next thing you know, it's gonna say, okay, importing your 438 contacts. Then they live in your IQO database and everything is awesome. Uh, it's like that Lego song. Okay, now once that happens, and I'm gonna get out of mine, um, let's see, I'm gonna act as. You're uh, recording this, aren't you? I, I am. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm gonna act as um, someone just so I can show you really quickly what that looks like. Since I'm a, not an agent, uh, I play one on TV, but since I'm not an agent, I don't have a ton of uh, contacts in here. So we're gonna to go to Janine's and she's got a few contacts in here and here's what it looks like when you come into your contacts uh, page. Remember, you've got two different types. Leads are the things that come to you from the World Wide Web and you've made contact with them. If they become a client, then you can put them in your contacts, but they live as leads, whereas all these people I'm talking about live as contacts. So here are all of her contacts um, and you can just click on one to do whatever you want, Change, add more information, um, this is how you would this is how you would put them into here are all of Jeanine's contact types she holds the world record for the most contact types it drives me nuts but if you want a Jim Mason in your 2002 buyer seller because uh, he came along in 2002 you would click that and then you would add him that way okay I don't want to get too deep into this because that's not the point of it I'm just giving you an overview of where your contacts live and why it's important to have them in here newsletters uh, flyers about a new property, all sorts of ways for you to be in touch with your contacts if you have them in IQO. If you don't, I can't help you. Elizabeth can't help you. Daisha can probably help you because she's like that. But I can't really do I, I can't use your email to send an email out to your contacts if they're not in IQO. If they are, I can act as you and I can do all this stuff. Your OMs can help with that too. So that's why I want these in here. Okay, I'll stop acting as Janine, although that's a definite upgrade for me. Okay, um, next thing. So that's contacts in your CRM. CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. Okay, for older people like me, it sometimes means can't remember much, but it's Customer Relationship Management. You are managing your relationships with your customers using the CRM. Folks, most, <laughs> most companies don't have this. They don't have a CRM. You have to go out and buy your own CRM. So Todd showed us a video of some guy who was so excited the other day on doing a YouTube.
in front of this company. And guess what, everybody? And here it is, 2018. We are going to give you a CRM. It was like Steve Martin, wild and crazy. And everybody's going, woo. We've had CRMs for like eight, nine, ten years in this company. But if, you, if it's there and you don't use it, well, that's like having a Lamborghini in the garage that never has any gas in it. It's not smart. Okay, CB marketing packages and the DFS. I know the DFS doesn't mean much to you, but this is really important, especially as you start to generate more business, okay? Another great thing about our company is that we have these marketing packages that are um, slick, they're uh, discounted to you. We absorb about 60% of the cost, photography and all that kind of stuff, generating flyers. Uh, and so when you get a new listing, we want you to be using the CB packages, Colwell Banker 1, 2, and 3. The one is a little less expensive. It's a basic package, but you're still getting pro photography, pro flyers, pro postcards, all sorts of things. Again, this isn't to go into de detail about the three programs. It's just to let you know how to get to those. And when you bring on a new listing, you need to, I really believe you need to use our system. It's cheaper, it's better, it's more professional, and it's pretty much touch of the button. Okay, how do I find those, Mr. Whatever your name is? Um, this is a little confusing because here I am in Sun Valley, so this reads as Sun Valley. If you're in Grand Junction, it's going to be under G. So I'm going up here to this link in my IQO, okay? Judy, I love your smile. Just You just keep smiling. I'll just keep talking. It's awesome. Thank you, Judy. Look at that. Yeah, and those earrings wedding, banging and everything like that. Okay, since I'm in Sun Valley, mine's way down here in the S's, Sun Valley CB1, 2, and 3 order form. This is how I order my marketing packages. I come in here. I've got, I've got a condo, it's a $350,000 condo. I don't wanna spend a ton of money on it, so in Sun Valley, I'm gonna spend $149 for pro photography, flyers, postcards, um, Facebook posts, all that stuff. Whereas if I just hired a photo photographer on my own, I'm already out 250. And I don't have anything but the photos, okay? So I click on this here, um, and IQ slow will generate this and this is a live form. I come in here, I do have to fill in some information, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the three minutes you're gonna take out of your life to fill this in is gonna save you 18 to 20 hours of marketing stuff because once it's in here, boom, you've got some proofing to do from the marketing department, you've got some approval to do, but what I'm telling you is these things save you money, they save you time and they look good and it's not just for your listing, it's for your future listings. You can show your clients, look what I just did for this $350,000 condo I brought on. Aren't these materials awesome? Look at the photography. So you're really bolstering yourself and your company when you use the CB packages. Stands for Cola Banker 1, it's less money. Each market is different. I think Grand Junction CB1 is $89, um, but you get them right here. If you wanna do a global luxury, uh, if you have a global luxury listing, Lexi will go over this in the roadshow, but you'll be doing a CB3. And those again are all right here. If you're in Bozeman, it's gonna be up here, Bozeman CB1, Montrose will be in the M's, so on and so forth, okay? I don't wanna drill down too deep into any of these things, I'm just giving you the 10,000 foot overview. That's where you get your marketing packages. Those go directly essentially to your OMs and the marketing, so if you have any questions about that, Talk to your OM, and, and Elizabeth, you can shake your head yes on this one. That's an easy question. Yes? Oh, I, with the eye roll. God dang, I can never win. What's the DFS? Um, it's almost my initials, but not quite. Don't get any ideas about what the F stands for. Um, but DFS stands for Digital Filing System, okay? And we are trying to go paperless in this company because it's 2018, and uh, we should be a paperless uh, industry. Um, all of your deals from the moment it becomes a live listing to the moment you close it live here online. You can print out everything, you can fax things, you can use your dot matrix because you like to know, whatever, but for us, for our purposes, the stuff will be digital. Even if you hand us those dot matrix things with the funky stuff, side uh, hole stuff, um, we will scan it and it will become digital. So save us all some work and just start doing digital things. Uh, all markets have different things, so I can't talk about form simplicity or, or DocuSign or whatever. I'm not going to get into that. But basically, once you get a listing from soup to nuts, from nuts to bolts, what's the saying? <laughs> whatever. Yeah. It lives here in the digital filing system. Okay? DFS, digital filing system. These are all trainings here about how to 
use it, I would start here with the digital file system overview. Um, and then once you get a listing, again, Sun Valley, I have a new listing. I have to go in here, I have to click this. This three minutes, I know you've already done your MLS, or you're going to, this three minutes makes your new listing alive in our system, okay? We don't pull from MLS into our, into our transaction system, so this has to be done. It's a long form, but it takes about two or three minutes. It's long only because we have a ton of options, okay? MLS number, if you're doing this ahead of time, Jennifer, what's the best practice if you don't have the MLS number yet? It's helpful if you put the date when you expect to have it go live in the MLS. And then your OM can set up a reminder um, to go in and check the MLS and see when it's live. And then we can create the transaction. But we can't actually create a transaction until it's live in the MLS. Okay. But you do this ahead of time and then it, it's sort of hibernating in our system. Source of client. Um, this is obviously for a listing. Um, it gets a little bit... Uh, weird in here if um, this is where you can order your transaction coordination probably not going to talk about that in this one although if you don't want to have to do much with your transaction except for go sell it click on this pay a little bit more money and you will find yourself so happy you did this um, and then you click submit and then your OM and our system and Teresa knows that you've got a new listing in our system okay great now if you're Shannon Seacrest you uh, get a new listing and within about 25 to 30 minutes, it goes under contract. So he's already done the new listing for him. And once it goes under contract, I have to come here and again, Sun Valley, it would be B if, up top if it's Bozeman. Um, I come here and this is how I tell my OM and Teresa and IQO that, oh shoot, I've got something happening here. Um, so I know it's like, why am I doing double entry? But these are two or three minute forms. It, it just, it, it allows us to know more about what's going on. And the more we know, the more we can help you, except for Elizabeth, we'll shake her head. No, I'm just kidding. Elizabeth's super helpful too. She'll tell you what Groundhog Day is. Um, sometimes you might not know who the buyer is. If you're the listing agent, you might not know the um, buying information like here. Okay, so don't worry too much about that. But this makes sure that we know all the details about uh, all this stuff. Okay. You, you do. You do have to fill in all the fields, though. So if you don't know something, then put N A in there. You know, enter the entity type. Select something. Make make a guess at what you think that is. Um, that so it's that most of these fields are required. Yeah. So any of the red asterisks are required. So just do your best with those. N A is fine. Um, I don't drink that, but if you want to do that, that's fine. Okay. So that's all the digital filing system, the DFS. So both your marketing packages and all of your contract forms to get, uh, to get things going live in this chain link drop down fence uh, link. <laughs> chain link <laughs> fence drop down. Okay. Um, what else lives in this? So much stuff. Okay. Business Ignite order form. If you want to have blogs and videos done for you by the company, you can do it there. Um, DFS trainings, IQO lead management video. So a lot of these things are trainings. Uh, we're going to get rid of a few of these because it is kind of clogged up, but um, you can come here and you can, you can learn a lot. Okay. That's what's in that chain link. Drop down. Yes. Okay. Great. And remember this one is an, is, sorry, this one is an IQO corporate help and videos. Uh, don't do your domain buying here. Do it through GoDaddy. Um, hopefully a lot of you newer agents are doing that. Josh Fields just got his. He's um, fieldsdistinctiveproperties.com, which is great. I really recommend that you get a, a website name that is catchier than the jfields.cbdistinctive.com because that's hard to remember. Um, we got Ned Burns in the, in the house now. He's nedburnsrealestate.com. Karen Shea is Shea Buxton. Uh, real estate dot, or shaybuxton.com. Those things are simple to remember. Get yourself a domain name. Okay, that wasn't on the, the list, but there's my little plug for that. So we've gone over one and two, and I knew those would take a little bit longer. Number three, really simple, and I don't have any fancy things to show you here, but number three is open houses. Are you sitting them? As a new agent, you probably, unless you've come from another company and brought a bunch of listings with you, yay, thank you, I think you've made a good choice, you probably don't have a ton of listings that you're gonna be holding open houses for. But here's what you need to do as a new agent. Here's what you need to do as a new agent, is find the agents in your office that have listings and tell them you want to hold open houses at 
X, Y, and Z listings over the next two or three weeks. Ask them your permission to hold it open, uh, get buyers, become an agent out there, promote it through IQO to your MLS. Hey, holding open the ski hut today. Um, drop by from 11 to 2. I'll have NA beer as well as um, shelled walnuts. Stop by. You can do whatever through these emails. You're doing about five things for this when, when you sit someone else's open house. You're saying you're an agent that is doing the work. Okay? You're promoting your colleagues' listing and your office and your company's listing. Good job. You are meeting, maybe this is the most important, so I'm going to get real close on this one. You're meeting potential buyers. And for new agents who don't have a ton of buyers out there, because maybe you're 24 and all your friends are still, you know, drinking and smoking and stuff, they're not going to buy. You need to meet buyers. So you hold an open house. Someone comes in. They're not attached to an agent. Guess what? You close that deal. You make them your agent. That's awesome. Okay. That's what you're doing at, at open houses. It, and you're learning your scripts. You're able to practice in real time. When someone comes in, you're, lear you're learning how to talk about a house, about the features that are awesome, about, oh, but I don't like the staircase. What's your response? You're not going to be able to learn that watching videos and, and reading things. You're going to be able to learn it by being able to talk to those people about, oh, you know what? That's right. And I have a builder who is great at staircases because you've got a reservoir of vendors. And when you become the authority person for that buyer, they're going to use you because all of a sudden they're obligated to you. They're like, God, that dude, I don't like the way he looks, but he's really smart. He knows a lot of stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to use him. You're doing so much when you're sitting in open house. Do it. So my challenge to you as far as open houses go is that between now and the end of February, I hope all of you new agents, newer agents, agents that don't have a ton of listings, Josh's listing is like 45 miles away, so it doesn't, it's not super easy to go have an open house down there, is do five open house sits in this month of February that are not yours, okay? Do five of those, and you're going to be amazed at how much better you feel as an agent, how much better you get at scripting, at, at talking through objections, at getting some buyers, and at other agents out there noticing that, oh, he's new, but well, dude, he's working. Because agents out there don't want to work with agents that they don't think are producers. They don't. They will, but they don't. If you get your name in front of them because you're sitting open houses, they're going to know you're playing the game for real. Okay? That's what I'm going to say to you about open houses. And here's the other thing I'm going to dovetail on that is when you're talking to these agents, ask if you can go on uh, a, uh, a showing or two with them. I really believe that when you watch an expert as the apprentice, you're going to get so much out of that. Hey, uh, hey, Ned, I know yes, you're showing... No, no, oh. sorry. <laughs> um, he was like that in school, too. He'd be asleep, and then someone says, yeah, yeah, what's up? I'm, I'm good. Um, so Ned and Karen just brought on an awesome $4 million listing on the river here. Um, when they get a showing, if I'm a new agent, I'm going to be like, hey, Ned and, and Karen, um, if I shower and dress up a little bit, can I come on the showing with you? Because I want to know more about this house. I want to know more about how you do your business and how you talk through these things. Use an apprenticeship model, even if you're not signed up with a mentor or anything, and exploit that, okay? Learn from the best and you'll become one of the best. That's my pitch about open houses and showings for a newer agent. Um, I'm not gonna get into how to set up an open house or anything like that, um, that's for another time, but challenge you to do five open houses this month um, and get really good at them and hopefully sell one. I mean, wouldn't that be awesome you sell one of your colleagues' homes because you sat it as an open house? That would be super sweet. Okay, a little caveat there or a little uh, digression there. Now we're going to get back into our tools. IQO, what you need to know. IQO is an enormous system. You can't know everything. I've been doing this job for a year and a month now, and I'm still baffled sometimes by all the things that live in IQO and all the possibilities and potential and all the things that I don't know. Um, but here's what I want to show you really briefly about IQO because we can't do everything. Uh, I've shown you where your leads live. Remember, these are all file cabinets. I never use communication, um, but I use this one a lot. This is, this is super helpful. In this file cabinet of files is where almost all the documents that the company has generated live, okay? So files live here in documents library. So if I just click here on documents library, and it's not 
super intuitive all the time, but it's pretty user friendly, I think. These are the things that have been uploaded most recently. So here in Sun Valley, we're, we're doing some classes about objections and role playing. So I put these things here. These things have just shown up, so they're new. Maybe you want to take a look. The most popular documents in the com company all live here so that they're easily accessed. See, these are all PDFs. Bam, you click it, it downloads, and then you've got the document. So you can literally be Cody in Arizona, skateboarding on a lake or whatever, and do business because you've got your IQO always online. Okay, Bozeman office stuff here. Any trainings and, and education stuff all lives in this folder called education. Isn't that classy? Uh, global luxury things, marketing materials, OMs. Please keep in mind that you've got, and Carrie, this is good for you to know. All the stuff that we hope you're doing and need to know should live in this OM folder. And if not, we'll get it, we'll get it in there. Um, referral forms, transaction coordination, and the Vail office. Sorry, you guys start with the V, you're down there. Anyway. Hey, yeah. on the referral form, I think oh. you're misnamed. You what? I think they're named flip-flopped. Outgoing okay. and incoming, FYI. Okay, we'll, we'll take a look. Thank you. Um, you cannot put things as an agent into this. This is only a, a store for you to grab things from. Um, but a couple of things that live here in education, I'm going to open this folder. Uh, I've already got them loaded because I knew it would take a little bit of time. Is there's one sheets galore in here about all sorts of things. You want to learn about Instagram? There's a one uh, sheet. There. Jennifer loves my one sheet. She wishes they were called three sheets so that they were even longer. Um, I'd like to call them four sheets and I put them into the wind, but that's probably another story. Any scripts you want to work on. If you want to work on objections, if you want to work on sales scripts, scripts live in here. Come and grab stuff out of here. And if you can't remember where this is, you can always email me and I'll send it to you and give you the the arrows of how to get to these things. Here's 21 ways to grow your business. There's only 21, there's not 22, so don't get greedy. Um, guides, here are the couple things that I've already got prompted. IQO visual guide, as well as the toolboxes at a glance. Lastly, this training video spreadsheet. Any trainings the company has done online, on YouTube or whatever, live here. So if you ever wanna learn about Facebook and want the video, it's gonna live on this spreadsheet. You have to go get it, open it, and then find the link. Not super easy, but it's all right here. Anyway, um, here are the two things that I've got loaded. Here are your primary toolboxes as an agent. Um, you don't need to write this stuff down. I'll probably attach these things in my recording email so that everybody has these. But we're, we're talking right now about IQO. CB Exchange is the global Coal Banker thing. That's where all the Coal Banker stuff lives. That's like a shopping mall for Coal Banker. IQO is your CBDP office. And then other toolboxes include each other, the Facebooks, uh, Google Drive, which we use, uh, your MLS, our YouTube channels, and so on and so forth. So again, not drilling down too deeply, but um, all of this stuff exists for you to learn and to get practice with, and you can't learn it all overnight. Uh, but when I attach this, hopefully you'll learn a little bit about what CD Exchange does and how you get into it. IQO, probably more important for your business on a daily basis, so it's a little more in depth here. Okay, so there's all that. And then here's the IQO guide. It's only 18 pages long, so it's a really quick read. <laughs> IQO is huge. I'm telling you, it's huge, it's huge, it's huge, it's huge. So I tried to break it down into all the things you need to know. All those different file cabinets have, have their own little section. Um, this is on our uh, mountain here in, in Sun Valley. This is how I feel about IQO. It's like super fun but it's windy and then it goes back this way and it's tough sometimes, but it's super fun. Here are all the file cabinets. So this is just a breakdown. Again, I'll attach this so that all of you have this at the ready, even though you can always access these things through IQO. I tried to use as many arrows as possible just because I'm a big Robin Hood fan. Hopefully that doesn't um, hurt anyone's eyes too much, but really trying to show you what lives on all of these pages. Look at Josh, man. I think it's the only time Josh Anderson from from Vail has ever worn a tie. And that's probably a clip on, but man, he looks good. Um, okay, so on and so forth. We're not drilling down, I'm just showing you this all is here, okay? Any questions right now? OMs, am I hitting things I need to, or would you like me to actually drill into something because it always comes up when, you, when we talk about this. Anything, OMs? Derek, this is Kristen, I actually have a question. Hi, Kristen. And I'm not sure if you've gotten here yet because I actually had to just step away and take a phone call and I apologize. <laughs> busy, busy, busy. But, yes. Um, I was trying in IQO, uh, you know how you can go into your listing 
and you can click on the little icon and share it to uh, Facebook and such? Yeah. Well, I wanted to do that with a sold listing and I couldn't, uh, it wasn't letting me and I couldn't figure out how to do it. Can you do it with a sold listing so you can advertise that a home just sold? Um, my understanding is that once a, a listing is sold, it's sort of out of the system. It, it's like uh, it's been retired, you know, so it's a horse that's been put out to, to pasture and you can't ride it anymore. Am I correct? It, is that the same with our website? Because I try to then go into our website or even do like a landing page because I wanted to use uh, the address like 1234 Main Street, uh, you know, and reserve that through GoDaddy and then go ahead and have the landing page through the website with that street address uh, as the, are you shaking your head? <laughs> uh, no, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think and I shake my head sometimes when I think. So uh, <laughs> I don't think so, but um, let me, let me get a definitive answer for you on that. Uh, closed listings, I wish they lived, because yeah, you, I mean, when you can promote your closed listings, then people know you're really good at what you do. Well, and we that's might. really huge in this market, so it'd be really helpful if there was some way we could do that. Okay, awesome. Um, so, Kristen, let me back out and get 10,000 feet instead of 500 feet. Thanks for your question. Um, I'll send you a consolation prize. What, what she's talking about with the listings is in this listings file cabinet live all can everybody see everybody's listings? Yes. I think no matter what your level of, of access, you can see everybody's listings. So if I'm an agent in Grand Junction and I have a buyer, or sorry, in Ketchum, and I have a buyer that I think might be interested in, in Whiskey Jacks, which is a bar in, in Ketchum, even if it's not my listing, it belongs to Jimmy, I can come in here and I can, I can send this listing out. Um, now, I'm not going to get the commission as the seller, but if I end up bringing the buyer because I, I sent this out, I'm going to be awesome. So all of a sudden in this listing, I can, I can post this to my Facebook. I can, oops, sorry. I can grab the link. I can do all these things and then, and then do whatever I want with it. Maybe i maybe my, my buyer, um, Cicely, she is in town and I want to send her this link. So I'm just going to click this. I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to bog things down. I'll copy the link and I'll send an email to Cicely saying, Hey, Cicely, I want you to look at this because when you come to town, we're going to look at Whiskey Jacks and we're going to have a couple drinks and I want you to buy it. She's got the website. It looks awesome. She's got information. You look cool because you're able to send a, someone else's listing to her without doing it through the MLS. It gives you your own, uh, its own um, website, so on and so forth. So Lots of things you can do from here. These are all the listings and so much stuff lives in here. Um, it's just awesome. So that's that file cabinet right there. Okay, Kristen, thanks for that question. Uh, and I'll try to, we'll try to get an answer, a more concrete answer for you in just a moment. Um, okay, so IQO, what you need to know. Here's, here's the next piece of IQO that I think every new agent needs to know exists. And again, Lean on your OMs, lean on me to help you with this because um, these things are not always like super intuitive how to do it, but once you get fluency with it, it becomes a really good friend. Karen and Dana have been here a few months and they've sent probably 8,000 emails worth in the campaign that I'm about to show you. Um, so uh, in, mar in the marketing file cabinet, there's a, there's a few too many things here and really my agents and we in Sun Valley pretty much live in this e-marketing section here, okay? Um, you can print flyers from here. I could, even though it's not my listing, I could take that Whiskey Jacks listing and I can make a flyer of it and my photo will be on it and send it to someone. That's pretty cool. So I have access to all these things through the marketing um, file cabinet. But what I want to show you right now is that, remember we were talking about the contact types earlier? Okay, let's say that I want to send something to all my Northridge contacts. And I've got 48 of them because when I imported my list, 48 of those people had Northridge contact types. So I can send a flyer about the recent Northridge activity, eight homes sold in January in Northridge. Are you ready to put your home on the market? That would be the email and it's going to go to them all with one touch. And all of a sudden, A, you're showing them information about their market. You're encouraging them to think about whether they should sell. And you're making yourself look like the authority, the brain, and they're going to call you because you're staying top of mind. Um, you need your OMs to help you with this until you get, until you get used to it. But one thing that don't go overboard with this because you'll wear agents out. But if you come into camp, company campaigns, and if you're a Bozeman agent and you want to send an email to the Bozeman MLS 
about a new listing that you have or a price reduction, you come in here to Bozeman MLS campaign. What we've tried to do is keep you from having to have all of your MLS in your contacts. We want your contacts to be your people, not the MLS. So we've built campaigns with all the MLSs in here, Grand Junction, um, Montrose, so on and so forth. Where are they? Well, they're on the next page because we've got a lot of these things in here. But all of these, all of these campaigns, almost all of them, are here for your use. Okay. Um, referrals. So if I'm a Sun Valley agent and I want to send out an MLS blast, you just have one. Sorry, Elizabeth, did you have a question? Okay. No, sorry. That's okay. Okay, I'm going to add an event. I don't expect you to memorize this in one showing, um, but this is just the, the basics about how to do this. I want to add a new event to my campaign. This is going to the MLS uh, group. Um, I'm going to select blank content because that's one I like. I can put a picture in there and some text and make it look exactly like I want. And then I just click here and I can, um, once the buttons come up, I can just type the email. Come on, come on, come on. There it is. Well, it takes a minute. It takes a minute to edit. Okay, so here's my, it's, it's like a new email basically. And I want to put a photo in there because I'm a big fan of photos. Um, I shouldn't do that, should I? Okay, so like we sent we set a, a musical Christmas card to all of the MLS. And I had all my agents, most of them anyway, sing one of their favorite Christmas carols. And then I put this image in the email and I linked it to the YouTube video and sent this to the MLS. And all I did was this and they push play and everybody gets to hear our horrible voices, but it was, it was fun and all I was trying to do is make sure everybody out there knows we're a fun office. Okay, so I finish, I click okay. This is gonna go to my MLS. Uh, I'm gonna make this inactive so I don't mess up anything. I'm gonna change my subject. Always make sure, <laughs> you might recall that in the fall I sent uh, a Bozeman MLS email to all the Sun Valley agents because I did not make something inactive. Silly me. But my subject should always be something that's going to make someone open this. Don't just say open house or a uh, new listing because every agent in the whole in the whole market does those things. So uh, Karen and Dana just sent one out yesterday. It was awesome. Have you seen this? And it was weird because they had a picture of a dog on it, but whatever. Uh, at least people opened it because when you ask a question or you make them want to know what, like you have a secret, a mystery, people are going to click on it. If your subject is, um, you know, brand new listing, whatever, only a few people. So compel people to open your email. Just like your open house thing, this does about five things for you. It not only informs the MLS about what you're doing, but it tells people, man, that guy's, he's doing stuff. And that office seems to have a cool system that allows him to do that. Because at my office, if I send an email to the MLS, all I can use is the MLS function and it looks like every other one it looks like it was done you know on, a, on an IBM computer in 1988 wow that company's got some cool tools okay so it does a lot of stuff and it's good for your sellers if you're sending out an MLS flyer or what have you uh, because it looks good okay I'm gonna cancel all of this and get out of it um, so that's a that's a campaign but I can also I can also send out a flyer okay of, a, of any listing in my market you don't have a last number anymore. Okay, that's fine. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go. That was in company campaigns. Now I'm gonna do my campaign. I'm gonna do something just for me, and I'm gonna create a campaign, and I'm gonna send out a flyer to, to four or five people. Okay, um, so there's there's about 500 templates. What I my favorite one, everybody, is. Um, on the market because it gives me the most flexibility and I think the pictures look the nicest. So I come over here to category, I'm gonna send out a property flyer on the market. Now I get to choose and I'm gonna choose my favorite color in the world, blue. It's actually, yeah, no it is, it's fine. Derek, I'm, if I may, um, because- Elizabeth, you're out of M&Ms, no. No, I'm kidding, what's up? I have a blue M&M. <laughs> that would be cool, oh, that'd be cool. Um, one thing I've learned because they build the this IQ builds everything as a PDF. So um, I've done a few of these and um, the best way that I've seen that gets readership because people don't want to open up their email blasts and have to open an attachment. 
That's just what I have found. So if you can take this, do a save as, and um, you, so you'll save it, download it as a PDF, but there are um, free software out there to convert it to a JPEG because you want to attach to your email as a, as a picture, you get a lot more readership. Ah, okay. I've always thought of it in the opposite way, but what Elizabeth is saying is that if you have an attachment, people are going to be more likely maybe to open your email because they want to see what that attachment might be. Okay. Um, fair enough. So, uh, I have a program too that converts PDFs to JPEGs, but okay. So I'm going to show you the simplest way to do this and then we can talk about attachments more, but any of these screens here are editable, but uh, Ned and Karen's new listings. Awesome. You can put in the MLS number, the property, the address number, which is <laughs> dude is 420, man, 420 Wood River. <laughs> and um, it should populate. It's not in the MLS. So. Yeah, it's not in the MLS. <laughs> Uh, so, 960, you know, 960 Rocking Horse, it's another cool one, uh, and it's, okay. So, and now I push OK, and what IQO is going to do is it's going to go find um, this thing in the MLS, and it's going to populate the first three pictures that you have in your MLS feed into the flyer. And you're going to sit here and go, God, this takes a long time. I made flyers in another company for two years and making a flyer takes about 30 minutes for a person to do it. Okay. So the two minutes or the one minute that IQO takes to go grab things and do this is a, is a remarkable, um, remarkably efficient, uh, thing. Okay. I know it's sitting here taking a long time. In um, the veil market, you can plug in the MLS number and it populates it. Yep. And that happens here too. We just didn't have any at our, um, Disposal. So, can you do postcards in IQ Office as well? Godfather, what's up? Can you do uh, postcards in, in IQ Office? Yep. Yes, you can. So uh, now it's futzing out on me. I'm sorry, but if you if you already have a little built image, a four by six postcard, you can choose the blank content one and just post that little JPEG in there. That's what the holiday campaign essentially it is Robert so those little photos bam put them in there so yeah you can do postcards but only email only you can't do a print no you're not creating postcards, you're not creating postcards no okay okay Robert I actually like you on mute better let's let's uh, stick with that <laughs> can't hear you Robert can you do a real postcard through IQ office no, you can do it though through CB Exchange and Express Docs um, and your OMs know all about that. I've never done a tech talk on that or anything because I don't really want agents going and doing their own Express Docs stuff because we want some quality control. But um, as part of your CB packages, those postcards get done just about automatically for you. Okay, so, but if you're doing a just sold postcard or something, I can help you with that. Maybe your OM can, but we can put together things. Um, which I highly advise. It doesn't even have to be your listing that you sold. We've had some agents, if they're farming a certain neighborhood and something sold and it was totally two totally different agents, well, so what? It's still sold. You can still create a postcard about that and send it to your farming list, even though you weren't involved in the sale and just keep them informed. So in a way it sort of looks like you were involved in the sale, even though you weren't. So it's kind of a nice little Jedi mind trick. Um, to, to you. So, and Robert, we can talk more about what kind of postcard you're, you're thinking about here. Um, maybe a wish you were here or weather is beautiful. Too bad you're not that sort of thing. Okay. Last thing, Facebook business page. Okay. Facebook business page. Um, Facebook is getting more and more draconian with not letting you do promote things on your personal page. And I really think you should, all agents should have their own business page that is based off of their personal page. You have to have a Facebook personal page in order to have a business page and create one. But um, I'm just gonna show you really quickly how you go about doing that. So here's my personal page. Um, there's my son popping a wheelie. Um, oh, get out of the way here. Move, 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 sorry, give me a second. Okay, so here's my personal page. Um, if I wanna create a business page basically I'm, I'm doing that under the umbrella of my personal page so I'm coming over here to this drop-down arrow um, 
I have a bunch of pages. I have several agents that have made me an administrator of their page. So that tells me it's my page, even though it's not. If you, no, never mind. Um, dang it. Sorry for the slowness here. So you can see all the pages that, I'm, that I have, not responsibility for, but I have administrative access to. Uh, some agents here, all the Coldwell Banker ones, the office ones, a couple of dumb groups that I started and gave up on because um, I'm a quitter. Um, so, but if I want to create a page, my business page, I just come right here to create a page. And I want to be careful here because I don't want to create a new page. But basically, you're telling Facebook, oh, you want something that uh, you're going to market differently. You're going to create a business page right here. Okay. All right. It, there is some hoop jumping to it. You got to fill in some things and, and what have you. But what you end up with is a page. Josh, is, can I show yours? Sure. So Josh just went through this. And had I known we were recruiting an agent who didn't even have his own Facebook page, I probably wouldn't have been so hot on him because it sounds to me like he's still using a, a dot matrix printer. But we're going to try to look at Josh's uh, business page. So He's got hit. Uh, uh, he's got a notification. He's got notifications up. Well, this is a little misleading because these are all my pages notifications. Whatever. He put these photos up here. Um, they're supposed to slide. I'm not sure why they why they don't. But put something about your market here. If you're in Grand Junction, don't put a Sun Valley shop there. Um, now he's got all these things that he can do on his business page, like post stuff. Maybe he wants to post um, his IQO page because it's so cool. Okay, so he's going to go into here and write something. He's going to post paste the, the link. And the cool thing about links in Facebook is that once you post the link, paste the link in there, it goes and it grabs a nice image. So then you can just go ahead and delete all the garbage. And it's going to look like this. Now, this is obviously not a very interesting link. But if you did a YouTube video, you can get rid of all that URL talk and the video will just sit there. Okay. If, it doesn't go live until you publish it. Now you can write, hey, look at what a cool tool I am. I mean, have. Publish. And then he can publish it, or he can schedule it to go later because studies show that Facebook is busier from 1 to 3 in the afternoon and then after 6 in the evening. And here's the thinking with that is that people have eaten lunch and they've done the bulk of their work. And now in the afternoon, they're starting to futz off a little bit and look at Facebook more. So maybe you want to do this in the morning, but then schedule it for a one o'clock publish. If you want to boost it, great. I don't want to get into the weeds with that. I've got a couple of links I'm going to send you in the, in the recording that tell you the difference between boosting and promoting. We want to be more clear about that. But basically, that's why you have a business page so that you can talk business on here and you don't get in trouble with Facebook for trying to do business on your personal page because they don't want that. Okay, I'm gonna quit that. So I haven't finished, I wanna exit, excellent. Okay, um, so you've got, you need to have a business page. You can title it what you want, but make sure you know what you're doing so that you don't get stuck. Did you get that thing fixed? What? You put in the wrong terms there, no? no. Never mind. okay. Um, and then how much I, do the uh, business pages cost? Do you know? No, they're all free. Facebook is all free until you start boosting it. Okay. You might mention though that that's hard to change. Dana says you have to contact Facebook. Yeah. Just make sure that you get all your information right. Cause once you say save, Facebook becomes really weird and it's hard to change things. Um, now, great. You've got your business page. So what, how do you get your people to know? Well, unless you're Josh and you've never had a Facebook presence because I don't know why, but you basically um, would go to share. Uh, sorry. And you can share it on your personal timeline. So anyone that follows your personal page will see your business page. Look at that. In five days, Josh has 67 likes. And I think 42 of them are from him, but still it's a good number. Um, you can view the insights of your page, how's it performing, you can create an ad, you can create an event, you can, this is how you would um, invite, friends. invite friends. So if you have friends on your personal page, geez, invite friends right there. This will allow you to invite everybody that you have as friends from your personal page or just select a few, what have you. Um, where's the create page, create group? Okay, so 
this is a powerful little thing. Anytime you see three dots like this on a website these days, it, that's a powerful place to go. Okay, if you want to change stuff, you can come here. Um, all sorts of things. So anyway, um, that's how you make a business page. And I really want all of you. Hey, Scott, there you are. Step beyond media right there. Um, and so I've instructed Josh to post things side by side like that because I think it makes a really cool impression. Um, lots of things you can do here. This is not a Facebook training. This is a training to say get a Facebook business page if you don't already have one. Okay. Um, hey, uh, Eric, I want to chime in real quick. Hey, it's Scott Stewart, Step Beyond Media. Hey. Ignite. So it's interesting. it's interesting you brought up the Facebook thing. Uh, in 2018, Facebook launched a new algorithm on how your posts are being shown. Originally, your posts, if you had 100 friends and you posted, it'd go to 100 people. They changed the algorithm a little bit. So you have 100 people, you do a post, 50 people see them. If your post is interesting, more people will see them. Facebook is going back to more of a social networking uh, platform, not the business and there's a whole bunch of other terms I can get into another day. But what we're doing is we're looking into this new algorithm and seeing what is best. Um, you're not going to be able to post like you used to and get a thousand likes. You might post something and no one will even see it. So we're working on possibly doing a training video or information session here in the future to share a little more about how Facebook has changed and what they're doing now. So. Okay. Excellent. That's good stuff. I, if you ever feel like you really know Facebook, um, take a chill pill. Uh, pride goes before the fall. Facebook is always, always, always changing stuff up in part so people have to continue to engage. But it's purposely, uh, it, they are tough on purpose, I think. So don't get frustrated. Look at these dots. Look at the drop downs. Okay. Here I am as Josh. Oh, here's, I don't know. Anyway. Um, don't get frustrated. Same with IQO, same with CB Exchange, same with your OMs, and certainly same with your director of education. Don't get frustrated with any of these tools. Okay? Hey. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing because um, I'm tired of it. I want back to my own self. Okay. So, Carrie, sorry. Okay, the jokes are coming. <laughs> All right. Um, so some of you are brand new to the company. Awesome. Uh, a lot of you, it looks like, are actually uh, pretty, uh, pretty experienced with some of these tools, but I hope that you got a couple things out of here. You can always get better at these things. I'm always trying to get better as well as your OMs. We don't know everything. Kristen uh, Westland's question, case in point. Robert's question, case in point. And, but what we want to be able to do is if you really want to know how to do something, we want to figure that out and then help you do it. Um, you can't get really good at IQO if you don't use IQO a lot. So that's why I'm saying lean on your OMs a little bit more. Um, you can't really screw anything up unless you do a campaign like I've done to the wrong people altogether or whatever. Um, so just be careful of all that. And you can always send it first to yourself. And there's, a, there's some videos about that. Um, okay, so that was a 10,000-foot overview for newer agents. Yes, Elizabeth. And there's also a video on um, how to do your contacts and um, upload, download the list yeah. as well. And so it, I'll send this recording out. And I'm going to attach, I, I put together a sheet, I can show it to you right here, about the, the five things we talked about today, not the open house thing, but contacts, marketing packages, IQL primers, e-flyers, and Facebook business page. So I've got, I've got training links for all those things that will go along with uh, that recording email, okay? Now, you can get buried in links and trainings all day, and, and what I want to tell you is, Real estate is what? It's a contact sport. Make your calls first. Reach out to people. Do that stuff. Go see properties. Go be an agent first. And do the trainings not as the, the bulk of what you're doing, but as ancillary. Okay? If, if your idea of a real estate agent is to watch videos all day and have people tell you things, you're not going to get the job done. So find that balance. It should be 90-10, 80-20, something like that. Of I'm being a real estate agent. I'm doing deals. I'm talking to people. I'm wearing my badge and 10 or 20 percent of um, I'm, I'm learning about some of these tools because they don't come overnight and again you have to get fluent with them in order for them to make sense and uh, sometimes that's a little bit difficult but that's what you have all of us for okay um, any insights or questions not not weedy questions but big picture questions or something that I just totally uh, mangled 
you know, okay, today's Groundhog Day. Uh, the sun was out this morning here in Sun Valley, so we have six more weeks of fake news winter because we have had no snow yet this year. I think it's the same for most places. But um, have a good weekend and look for this recording to come through pretty soon. Don't forget, coaching starts Monday with a mastermind with Todd. Elite at 2 o'clock, core at 3, launch at 4, and then your one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you're doing it, starts the following week. Okay? So I'm um, looking forward to getting that session going. And thanks for all of your guys' attention and your participation and so on and so forth. Have a great weekend, everybody, and I am going to end the meeting.